Tonight, I am your guest speaker. In case you don't know me, I am G. Trulia or Jerry or Shithead or whatever you want to call me. It doesn't matter. But we're going to be talking about misfire diagnosis and what will be covered, where to start your diagnostic game plan. This is important. And this presentation is going to have a lot of different things sprinkled through. Some you know, some you don't know, some you're rusty on, and some you're going to go, how come I'm not doing that? Okay. So it's really to engage you and think about it. When I developed this class, it was for a state program. And because misfire codes are still some of the top 10 codes out there, it's still a problem. And when we think of misfire, we think of misfire as ignition is probably the number one thing that people pop up with. But it could be fuel. It could be an emission-related device like EGR. It could be mechanical. And that's usually overlooked. Okay, so we're going to show you some things here. This thing right now tells us good efficiency. So if I got a number under 14, I got some sort of problem. This motor is not working the way it used you to You should work. all own one of these breakout boxes. There's a couple of different ones out there. This one's from Bernie. There's another one from AES Wave. There's another one from a company Can Do. It's a nice new one. There's a few older style ones with no lights on them. But it gives you the great ability to check networking. Like if you come to the big event, you're going to see that these guys, uh, Ken Zanders, who's doing that, you're going to see that Kenny is using a breakout box with his scope. Okay? Because he's going to get in there on the can line 6 and 14 and see what problems you have. <laughs> Let's speak about this particular car that came in, a 2002 Honda. This came in when my son was running the shop, and it had violent bucking and misfire problems. So here's where people don't think out of the box. Like I said, you really need to use the tools that God gave you. Your brain, your eyes, your ears, your nose, your hands. So when this thing came in with this violent bucking and you could have problems with the VTEC system, I said to Craig, since it has new oil in it and he didn't do it, I said, you didn't change your oil? He goes, no. I said, okay, got new oil in it. This guy probably changed his own oil. How do you know what weight it is? He goes, Dad, no way this guy changed his own oil. Now, he's not telling me this guy's 80 years old until he argues with me, you know, <laughs> for a while. I said, Craig, I'm telling you, the guy changed his own oil because I looked down, and you'll see the picture of the filter. He had a Purolator, one of these gold filters that you buy in a big box store. I said, this guy did his own oil. No, 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 he's arguing with me. I said, just call the damn guy up, will you? Stop arguing with me. So he says, Dad, I'm telling you, you're wrong. He says, good. I'm wrong. Let's call the guy anyway. Call him up, and we said, did you change your oil? He goes, no. So right away, my son wants to jump on me. He says, no. He said, but my son-in-law. I said, aha. Now be quiet, Craig. What did your son-in-law do? He changed the oil. I said, well, did you notice, like, after he changed your oil, did you start developing this problem? He goes, no, maybe. Because it only happened when it warmed up. Now, look at the specification. It wants 520. We called the son-in-law up. There's the filter that I seen. And I said to Craig, no professional shop did this. Because none of us would use this in a professional shop, right? This is your big box store. You buy this filter, yada, yada, yada. Okay? So the son-in-law put 1030 in it. Now, you know what happens on these VTEX. Now, this is a GM test. You're all familiar with these coils, right? Well, if you go to General Motors, they'll tell you to take a test light. Go from one terminal to the other terminal. Crank it over, and if the light flashes, it's all good. 